precinct, I'm seeing more and more um, videos saying that eternal security is a doctrine of devils. Uh, believing God's promise is called faith, and it's counted to us for righteousness. It says that we can know we have eternal life. We're sealed till the day of redemption, not till you mess up. So I, I don't know. The only way you could think salvation can be lost is if you think it's you keeping it. But it says that God, Jesus himself, uh, presents us faultless and blames it, blameless. You know, it's him that's doing it, not, not us. What about those that say they used to be Christian? One or two things. First of all, God knows them that are his. We're warned not to fall into error, but that's not so we don't lose salvation. It's so we don't lose our victory and our purpose and our will, uh, being in God's will. It's not for salvation. Um, and in 1 Corinthians, where Paul says, lest I myself become a castaway, it's not a castaway of God, like God's going to cast him away. It's that in the eyes of people, he'll lose his uh, uh, standing as an apostle. That's why he keeps his body under subjection. Otherwise, he's going to, I mean, if he's out getting drunk and falling all over the place, who's going to believe him as an apostle? He's going to cast away in the eyes of people. Uh, it's also about the prize. The prize are the souls that he's saving. And some would argue that this is him talking about eternal reward for being an apostle, that he'd become a castaway in receipt of that reward. But I will read this to you here. Uh, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. See, this is his will, God's will for him. Woe to him if he doesn't do it. We saw what happened to Jonah when he tried to run away. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, okay? But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. So it, it, this is referencing reward. Is salvation a reward? No. Salvation is a free gift. Eternal life is a free gift received by faith. You're simply, when you say that I know I can't lose salvation, you're trusting God. And it's counted to you for righteousness, See, the Catholic Church doesn't want you to believe that. They call it the sin of presumption because they think you have to earn a state of grace. But then it's no longer grace. You see? If you have to earn it, it's not grace at all. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself a servant unto all that I might gain the more. Okay, so it seems like He's, it, it could be in reference to eternal reward, but to me, the reward here are the souls he's saving, okay? Uh, and to the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law as without the law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. So he's doing it to gain Jews and Gentiles. That's all he's saying. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Okay, so here, here he's going through all of this. His, and that's the context. And then he says, but I keep my body and bring it under subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others that I myself should be a castaway. Does that mean he's going to be cast away as saved? He's not going to be saved? No, of course not. See, he becomes all things to all men. So he won't be a castaway in the sight of men and be unable to save people. Okay, that's what that verse is. We can't take verses out of context to make them say whatever we want them to mean. All right. So let me let me give you a short article here. Uh, they said it. I've said it this way many times, but I'm just going to read how they say it. When people come to know Christ as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their eternal security. Jude 24 declares to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Is that based on your works? No, he presents you that way. Why? Because he imputes his righteousness on you by faith. God's power is able to keep the believer from falling. That is out of uh, salvation, all right? Doesn't mean that you're not going to mess up. Our eternal security is a result of God keeping us not us maintaining our salvation. Woe to us if we think that we're going to do anything to keep or get ourselves saved. That is so arrogant. I wish people would get this. The Lord Jesus Christ proclaimed, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. 
My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. That's John 10, 28. Both Jesus and the Father have us firmly grasped in their hand. Who can possibly separate us from the grip of both Father and Son? Ephesians 4.30 tells us that believers are sealed until the day of redemption. If believers did not have eternal security, the sealing could not truly be until the day of redemption, but only until the day of sinning, apostasy, or disbelief. All right, John 3.15 tells us whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If a person will be promised eternal life, but then have it taken away, it was never eternal to begin with. So it, said, it says we have passed from death to life. I, I, I don't know why people can't get this. Most powerful argument for eternal security is Romans 8.38. For I am convinced, now I don't think this is uh, uh, King James, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our eternal security is based on God's love for those who ha he has redeemed. Our eternal security is purchased by Christ, promised by the Father, and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, uh, I would agree with that. Uh, I... I I rest in him. It says, we who believe do enter into rest. We've ceased from our own works. Because our, our, our salvation is firmly grounded in what Christ already did and not what we do. So to us, the only way we could lose it is if Jesus go back in time and get off the cross. Because that's what our salvation is based on. And that's where my security comes in. Now see, I think if a person gets true revelation of that, why would they fall away? I mean, unless they're listening to false teachers and they get all shaken up and scared and then they start trying to work in their flesh for it, which is what was happening uh, to the Galatian church. But Paul straightened them out. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? You know, uh, it really is what Christ did. So if salvation is based only on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, which is the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the one Paul said saved us. And we're putting our faith in that. How can you lose it? Nothing will separate us. Even if we fall into error, once you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, he keeps you. And I believe the Holy Spirit teaches us all truth. And if you fall into error, he will bring you back to truth. He did me. You know, and John talks about those. They were not of us. Because if they'd have been of us, they would have stayed with us. But ha, you got to look at that. What was going on there? They had something wrong in their doctrine. They either believed Jesus didn't really bodily rise from the dead or that he wasn't the son of God. So they didn't believe truly. Okay, they had another Gnostic gospel that wasn't true or another Jesus. But if you have the true Christ and the true gospel, you have put your faith in that. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, until this body's redeemed. And that's why we can have joy and victory. All right. Paul was not going to be a castaway from God. It was lest he do something that in the eyes of people cause him to not be an apostle that they can trust. All right? That's why. All right, here we go. John 6, 37. All that the Father's given me shall come to me, and to him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Yeah, but you can cast yourself out. Really? I thought no man can take you out of his hands. You're more powerful than God? Mm-mm. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That includes you. All right? Stop with the worry. Stop with the fear. Fear is of torment. It is not of God. He does not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Remember that. If you've trusted in Christ, you should have no fear at all. Always come back to pointing to him. I said the way to get over your fear is to point to Christ. Always point to what he did and not what you do. That's how you have peace, all right? Because we fail. We will always, and, and feelings lie. The heart of man is wicked. Who can know it? You can't trust your heart. Trust God's word, okay? Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is John 5, 24, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. That's present tense. I have passed from death to life. My spirit is now alive in Christ. It cannot die. It cannot be unborn. No more than you can physically be unborn. Neither can you spiritually be unborn. 
Anybody that says, I used to be a born-in Christian, but now I'm an atheist, is a liar. They never truly trusted in Christ, and they never were born of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Again, if, it's, if you can lose it, it's not eternal. It's not everlasting. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Once he gives it to you, he will not take it back, no matter what you do, because now you're in his hands. And he is able to keep you from falling. He is able to present you blameless and spotless. Okay, because he's given you his righteousness. People don't understand imputed righteousness. As Abraham believed God, it's counted to him for righteousness. We believe God's promise, his report of his son, that he gives us eternal life. And that life is in his son. And it's accounted to us for righteousness. It's not sin. It's righteousness. They tell you if you believe God, it's a damnable heresy. But our Bible tells us if we believe God, it's counted to us for righteousness. Who are you going to believe, the Bible or these preachers? Okay? Now, of course, I'm not telling you not to live for God. I'm not telling you not to follow Jesus. We should all be doing that. But it doesn't save you. See, that's your works. You have to get saved first. Jude 124, now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 1 John 5, 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have, present tense, eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. All right? You can know you have it. If it was based on what you're doing, how can you know? It's not based on you. It's based on what Christ did 2,000 years ago. Here we go. Second Corinthians. Here's another one. Who has sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. He's in us. He, even when we believe not, yet he abides faithful, can't deny himself. Once he's in us, we are in him. He cannot deny us because he is in us. Do you understand? We're warned not to fall into that error, not to have our face shipwrecked. But it's not to not lose salvation. It's to lose the victory that comes with serving the Most High God. Uh, Ephesians, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you are keeping your salvation by something you're doing, you can boast. I stayed saved because I was so faithful. Nonsense. It's preservation of the saints, not perseverance of the saints. You aren't persevering at anything. God is preserving you and I think that's a really twisted way the Calvinists have just, they, well they've redefined everything grace they've redefined grace they've redefined belief they've redefined faith <sighs> here we go first John 5 10 he that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself he that believeth not God has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son and this is the record God gave of his son that it gives us eternal life and that life is in his son okay so who is gonna not believe that the one that has made God a liar because he believes not the record God gave of his son. So if you believe God, you have the record in yourself. The witness in you is the Holy Spirit telling you, yes, he saved me. All right, don't let any man shake you from that. Those that say he didn't save you and you're doing something to keep it has not, he's made God a liar and he believes not the record that God gave of his son. And here's the record God gave of his son, that he gives us eternal life, and that life is in his son. Okay? So, we can know we have eternal life. It is eternal. It is everlasting. If you could lose it, that's temporary, probationary. You are not yet saved. And I'm sick of this final salvation. No, we're sealed now until we are bodily redeemed. See, this new reborn spirit is what's going into heaven. Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom. This body, it died with Christ. That's what Paul's trying to tell us a long time ago. It's going to perish, but that new spirit is going to be joined to a glorified body, and that's what's going to enter heaven. Of course, flesh and blood can't, because it is sin itself. This is sin. This flesh, this body is sin. In it dwells no good thing. Paul said, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me, in my flesh, dwells no good thing. And it's the same thing here. As we grow in grace, the spirit becomes stronger, and it'll help us overcome the flesh in many times but we will not do that perfectly and your salvation is not based on that so i just wanted to give you some eternal security today so you can rest in christ you can have some joy and always look to him always look to him never to yourself all right god bless you guys